Good morning. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you. You too. Yeah. You have time to talk? You have a minute or two? Uh, sure. Okay. My name's Tony. Adrian. Adrian, good to meet you. So, Adrian, um, oh, I'm sorry. It was backwards. What do you think of this sign? Um, I agree with it. You do? Okay. Tell me about that. Um, Why do you agree with it? I'm glad you do. So, there's no trick in this. So, just, just because either way, you're still killing a living being. Okay. And, and, and there's no... Many people see it differently, but I see it as... A, yeah, it's, it's still a person, yeah. just not born yet. But he's still... That baby is still forming. So, he's still living. Yeah, I 100% agree with you. So, do you, do you see any circumstance where this would be okay? No. No, okay, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, I think uh, life begins at fertilization, and I think every human life is entitled to the same rights to life, to you know, dignity, to respect, um, and uh, and we should treat preborn humans the same way we would want to be treated. So, where where does that view come from? Where does uh, where does that worldview? Does that is that a spiritual belief yeah. for you? Is it a philosophical? Uh, spiritual man, I think. Okay, so tell me about that. What uh, what do you believe spiritually? You? Uh, well, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. You are? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, have, have you grown up in that faith? And Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, tell me a little bit about that. What uh, um, What is it that you believe? What? Uh, well... I know that's longer than yeah. what you have time for, but it, so uh, let me explain why I, I, I ask. And, and again, your first name again is Adrian. Uh, Adrian, I'm old and cold. Sorry. Um, I, when someone says, "Well, I belong to this group or that group, mm -hmm. or I follow this religion or that religion," I don't assume that they believe what I know about their religion. I take each person in front of me as they come, as they come. And so, so uh, for instance, who do you say that Jesus is? I would say he's uh, God's son. God's son. Okay. Uh, do you believe that he's that he is God? No. No. Okay. So tell me about that. Why? Why do you hold that belief? We we were taught that. Hope you're having a good one. Thank you. I hope you do too. Thank you very much. We were taught that, or we were taught that Jesus isn't God, but he is. He's like there to represent. Him. Okay. All represent right. Represent his teaching. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Him. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, Adrian, if you have time. Oh, no, 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 I was just had a question for you. Well, I, I'd love to, I'd love to try to answer it if I could. Oh, no, I, I'll, I'll just look it up. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, so Adrian, what do you think is more important? What we believe or whether or not what we believe is true? Whether or not what we believe is true. Yeah, abso absolutely. Right. If, uh, if uh, you walked up to me and said, hey, my name's Adrian, and I said, hi, I'm, I'm Tiffany. I'm a six-foot-five African-American woman who plays basketball here at the University of Iowa. <laughs> I don't know if there is a basketball player by the name of Tiffany on the ladies' basketball team. But you would look at me and say, well, that's not true. And so it wouldn't really matter what I believe about myself. What would matter is whether or not what I believe is true, right? So I, I assume, and I use the word assume, I assume that as a Jehovah's Witness, you believe that there is one God, mm -hmm. right? One God in, in the heavens. Can I, can I show you a passage of scripture in the Bible? Sure. And, and can we talk about it for a minute? Would that be all right? So I'm going to go to the book of Revelation. And um, I, I understand there are differences between the Bible, what Bible I'm reading and I have um, I have the New World Translation in my home, and, and so I know, I know there are some differences. So I would encourage you, when you have time, to go look up this passage in your own Bible, okay? All right. Hands are cold, sorry. Okay, so in Revelation chapter 1. Um, I'm going to begin reading back here in verse 12, just for context, okay? Then I turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turn, this is, this is the Apostle John, mm -hmm. right? The Apostle John was given a vision, and, uh, and he's, he's written this book, Revelation, mm -hmm. testifying to what, to what he was given. 
Then I, John, turned to see the voice that was speaking to me, and on turning I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the lampstands, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, uh, like white wool, like snow. His eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like burnished bronze, refined in a furnace, and his voice was like the roar of many waters. In his right hand he held seven stars. From his mouth came a sharp two-edged sword, and his face was like the sun, shining in full strength. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Fear not, I am the first and the last, and the living one. I died, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and Hades. Write, therefore, the things that you have seen, those that are and those that are to take place after this. As for the mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. So what I want, what I want to key on is, is this statement here, fear not, I am the first and the last. H have you seen that elsewhere in scripture? I think so. Yeah, it would be in the prophet Isaiah, where through the prophet Isaiah, God describes himself as being the first and the last. And who is it that is speaking here? Jesus. Jesus. Who, who describes himself as the first and the last. The Word of God says that there is only one God, um, uh, the one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who created the child in the womb, the one who created you and me. Um, there is only one God in the heavens. Yet Jesus here is saying that, that, that that's who I am, that he is the first and the last. Have you read that before? I think so. And so what do you think of that? How I, I think how I perceive it is that, like I said, he's kind of representing himself as God. So he's saying that this is what I am. So if he, so uh, Adrian, if he's representing himself as God, and he's not God, he's blasphemed the God who exists. Okay. But that's not what Jesus has done. Mm -hmm. See, I. I, I believe, Adrian, what the Bible does in fact teach is that there is indeed one God. Mm -hmm. One God in the heavens who created and rules all things. And that one God is, in a word, triune. One God in three persons. Okay. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Son of God, as you defined him, but in a different way, the Son of God came to earth in the person of Jesus Christ, truly God truly man without sin. Let, let me show you one other passage here. And I, I appreciate your time. And then I'm very thankful for the conversation too. In the book of Colossians also, which you will find in the, in the New World Translation. In Colossians chapter 1, he, speaking of Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Now the Jehovah's, the Watchtower Society would, would teach, and maybe, I don't know if you believe this or not, but the Watchtower Society would teach that, see, this means that Jesus was created. Mm -hmm. But that, that term, the firstborn, isn't a reference to chronology. It's a reference to eminence. It's a reference to authority. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation, for by him, he being Jesus, for by him all things were created. In heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, again speaking of eminence, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be, again, preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of the cross. And then if I could, just one more. In the book of Hebrews, beginning in chapter 1, verse 1, Long ago, at many times, in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, 
whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power after making purification for sins. He sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. So Jesus, so God the Son, was with the Father in creation. Just like God the Father and God the Spirit, God the Son is eternal. He is always existed yeah. and at a time appointed by the father he uh, came to earth in the person of Jesus Christ truly God truly man and without sin and he did that to, in order to reconcile a people to himself so it, um, so first of all just kind of threw a lot at you what, what do you think about what I shared with you I think I would agree with it Okay, all right. So, that for you, that has massive implications, right? Because um, in saying that you agree with that, you do put yourself in disagreement with the Watchtower Society. I think... Because the Watchtower yeah. Society, in part, teaches that Jesus is the incarnation of Michael the Archangel. Right. That he's not, he's not deity, he's not God in the flesh. And, and so what you just, and again, no tricks here or anything, yeah. Adrian, not trying to back you no corner, just, um, I, mean, I care about you, right? As much as I, as much as I, as much as I care for an unborn child, I care about Adrian because the two greatest commandments are to love God and to love people. Okay. So not trying to trick you with anything or anything like that. Uh, but, but what you're in agreement with puts you in direct opposition to the Watchtower Society okay. as far as their belief in Jesus, who they say Jesus is. And Adrian, that's actually magnificently good for you, okay? Because Adrian, one day, like all of us, you're gonna stand before God to give an account for your life. One of the tenets of the Watchtower Society is in, in order to be made right with God, you have to obey the law of God, correct? Right? I mean, am I right about that? Yeah. Right? You got to keep the commandments. Right? Adrian, have you done that perfectly? You know? No. And look, I'm 60. I'm close to being old enough to be your grandfather. Okay. And, and, and I've not lived a perfect day in my life. Okay. Um, but yet, if you're going to put your hope, any hope at all, in keeping the commandments, then in order to have that accepted by God who is holy and perfect, our keeping of those commandments have to be perfect. And so if you're putting any hope at all in keeping the commandments, do not lie, do not steal, uh, uh, do not worship any other God be, but by me, do not create any graven image, just remember the Sabbath, keep it holy, honor your mother and father. Again, do not lie, do not steal, do not murder, do not covet. You know, if we're not doing that perfectly, then when we die and stand before God, what he's going to see is our sin, our imperfection, our failure to keep his law. And because he's good, because he's holy and righteous and just, he's going to punish that sin. And, and I, know, I know that the Watchtower Society denies the doctrine of hell, mm -hmm. but yet the Word of God says Jesus spoke more about hell than he ever spoke about heaven. Because he's holy and righteous and just, he's going to punish that sin, and that punishment is eternity in hell. And to put trust in a Jesus, any Jesus that's not who Jesus actually is, is in fact to violate the first and second commandment, to, to worship a false god and to create, in a sense, a graven image. Not that you build a statue and worship it, but, but create a, a false god in our mind. A god that cannot condemn or judge because he doesn't exist outside the mind. But likewise, a God that cannot save because he doesn't exist outside of our mind. Does that make sense? I think so. Okay, so tell me what you're thinking now. Because I, 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 I wanna hear you. I'm gonna, I wanna hear what you're thinking, hear what, uh, how you're processing what I'm sharing with you. I just don't wanna just, mm -hmm. I don't wanna just talk to you, I wanna talk with you. 
So what do you think? I'm not sure. Um, because like how we were taught, how we were taught that there's no hell, um, that if when you die, you will either live on earth or in heaven, depending on, just depending on a few things. And then, yeah, we were taught that uh, like Jesus is God's son. But, I, but created, mm -hmm. but but a created being, yeah. right? Yeah, and and just as you rightly acknowledged earlier, mm -hmm. what's most important isn't what we believe, mm -hmm. or even what we've been taught, but whether or not what we believe and what we've been taught mm -hmm. is actually true. Yeah. Jesus Himself said, "I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father." but through me. And coming to the Father through Christ means believing that Jesus is who he said he was. And, and remember why they killed him. They killed him because he declared that he is God. Look, look, look at this here real quickly in John chapter 8. And again, you'll find, you'll find you know, this in the, in the New World Translation as well. So, just to set the scene a little bit, Jesus is uh, uh, talking to the, the Pharisees, the religious rulers of the day, right? And, and they said to him, we were not born of sexual immorality, we have one father, even God. Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and I am here. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. You are of your father the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the, tell the truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why do you not believe me? Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reasons why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. So this, of course, upsets the Jews. Uh, again, as the passage as the passage continues, they they accuse him of being a Samaritan, of having a demon, and of course Jesus says, "No, I don't. I don't have a demon." Jesus answered, If I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me. Does God share his glory with anyone? No. No. The Word of God makes that clear, that, that, that uh, God does not share his glory with anyone. Young man, if you're waiting to talk to me, I, 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 I'm not ignoring you. I do hear you. Oh, you're with Adrian. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I, I won't keep you too much longer. So, so God shares his glory with no one. Hey, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Good. Hey, I've seen... Uh, it's been a couple of years since I've been here, actually, but you look real familiar to me. Oh, I'm a first year, so. Oh, well, then. Okay. Yeah. Right, my name's Tony. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Jake. Jake, good to meet you. Jay or Jake? Jake. Jake, good to meet you. Which verse are you reading? I'm reading out of uh, John chapter 8. Oh, nice. So, um, my, my new friend Adrian here um, is, uh, is a follower of the Watchtower Society, a Jehovah's Witness. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. Excellent. And uh, so we're talking talking about who Jesus is and. So again, Jesus says, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my Father who glorifies me. And again, God shares his glory with no one, right? That's, that's very important. It is my Father who glorifies me, of whom you say he is our God, but you have not known him. I know him. If I were to say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Um, of course, this flusters the Jews. So the Jews said to him, You're not even 50 years old, and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Now, you're all college students. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you all had to take uh, uh, English as general ed, right? Yeah. They picked up stones to kill him when he said, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. They were not picking up stones to kill Jesus because he used poor grammar. 
before Abraham was, I am. That's not why. That, that, those two words, I am, where have you heard those before? Who, who gives himself the name I am? God. Yes. First time we see that is when God calls out to Moses through the burning bush. Right? Moses, mm -hmm. uh, a timid man at the time, God says, I'm going to send you to, I'm going to send you to Egypt. You're go I'm going to use you to set my people free. Moses says, yeah, no, send someone else. Nope. I'm, not, I'm not up to it. Send someone else. God says, no, you're the one. I'll give you your brother Aaron to help you. He can do some of the talking since you say you're slow of speech. Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing very poorly, by yeah. the way. Okay. God wasn't talking like that. And then Moses asks, well, when I hey, go... why don't you go find something fucking important to talk about? Uh, I, I believe my friends here would agree that I'm talking about something important. Would love to talk to you about it, too. Have a great day. Moses asks, okay, I'm going to go. Who shall I tell them sent me? God answers, I am that I am sent you. The reason the Jews picked up stones to kill Jesus is because they knew exactly what he was saying. He's saying, I'm the I am, right? If Jesus isn't the I am, they should have nailed him to a cross and murdered him. He was blaspheming God. Even the Watchtower Society, the, the Jesus that the Watchtower Society believes, would not accuse Jesus of blasphemy. He wasn't blaspheming God because God can't blaspheme himself. So again, as you rightly pointed out when I asked you what's more important, what we believe or whether or not what we believe is true, you rightly asserted what we, that what we believe is true, right? And again, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but, but through me. And he declared of himself, I am, which I showed you in Revelation, which I showed you in Colossians, which I showed you in Hebrews, which I've shown you in John, all of which you'll be able to find in your own translation of the scriptures. Yeah. So Adrian, my friend, and I, and I love you as my neighbor, you are going to die someday like the rest of us. I, I'm not a prophet, but I predict likely my day is gonna be sooner than yours because I'm 60 and you're a third of my age. When you die, you're going to stand before the God who is the actual God who is. He's going to judge you according to the law that he's written on your heart, which includes you will have no other gods before me, including creating a God in our imagination to suit ourselves. The hope I want to give you is that the real Jesus, the great I am, who was with the Father in creation, all things being created by him and through him and for him, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, as I showed you in Revelation, the first and the last, who was with the Father in creation, stepped down out of heaven, took on human flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, lived a life of perfection as God in the flesh for some 33 years that the three of us can't live for 33 seconds. Yet even though he knew no sin, he voluntarily submitted himself to the torturous, bloody death of a Roman cross. He died a death he did not deserve to take upon himself the punishment we rightly deserve for our sins against God. And then he forever defeated sin and death when he rose from the grave. And Adrian, what God commands of you is the same thing he commands of Jake and Tony and your friend over there, is that by faith we turn from our sin we turn from our unbelief, we turn from our false belief, and we turn toward God. And by faith and by faith alone, we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. And if God does that work in you, Adrian, as, as Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he will not enter the kingdom of heaven. If he does that miraculous loving work in you, Adrian, he will give you a new heart. You'll begin to love the things that God loves, namely him. You'll begin to hate the things that God hates, not other people, but first and foremost, your own sin. And he will reconcile you to himself. The God you've offended all your life by your sin will reconcile you to himself. He will adopt you as a beloved son. 
He will forgive your sin and remove them as far as the east is from the west, and your future will not be annihilationism, which is not taught in the Bible, and it won't be hell, which is taught in the Bible. It will be heaven, not because you've done anything to earn it or deserve it, but because of the goodness and mercy and grace and love of God that would allow His Son to die for you. Turn to Christ and live, the real Jesus. Turn to Christ and live while God's giving you time. So, so now what are you thinking? And don't do, don't do or say anything to me, for me, Adrian, but what's going on in your heart and your mind right now? I'm just thinking about it. Yeah? I, I don't know. Would, would it be all right if I gave you my card? Yeah, it, one. Well, th I mean, that actually has my oh, contact sure. info. Yeah. All I know is you're Adrian. No salesman's going to come to your door. But if you have questions, um, I, I, I would be, I live in Davenport. Be willing, I'd love to come back out here and, and sit with you and talk with you, break bread, whatever, answer questions, or just over the phone or by text. Would that be all right if I... Mm -hmm. This is a lot, that's a lot to hear, yeah. for sure. Uh, but it's pretty cool. You know? There you go, Jake. Oh, thanks, appreciate it. Uh, you guys off the class? Yeah. I am. Yes. Yeah. So, so Jake, I mean, you heard me share a lot with Adrian. Is that what you believe? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I've been, right. Praise uh, the Lord. I think I've been a, like, kind of like a true follower for like, probably like the start of this year. Yeah, really? Or like, Maybe mid, like last year. What brought that about? I know you guys got to get to class, and your friend's been very patient, but. Um, it was, uh, it was a really nice guy. He was um, a Christian guy, where he was like coming to doors and stuff in the room. Oh my God. I was like, yeah, like come in, and then we just talked for a while, and like started showing up to like studies and yeah, everything. And then was he the one to share the gospel with you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Praise um, the Lord. But I kind of took a step back and kind of like wanted to dig deep on my like myself and yeah. kind of study on my own stuff. Yeah. 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 And that study on your own led you to believe that what he was telling you was true? Yeah. And the, oh, yeah. this gospel you heard today, that's what you believe? Yeah. Exactly. Praise the Lord. Good to so, meet your brother in the Lord. Yeah, no problem. Praise I just wanted Lord. to stop by and say keep going. Thank you. Know? you. I appreciate it. You know, look, I've, um, I, I, I've done ministry on college campuses in about a dozen states. Now, of course, I was home. Um, and it's been a couple of years since I've been been here, yeah. you know, and uh, so I was wondering, you know, what what would life be like coming back? Because students change, time changes. Mm -hmm. But of and, and I was I'm from California originally, so I oh, spent nice. time at UCLA and other yeah. other campuses. But hands down, without a doubt, whether believer or unbeliever, the the friendliest campus I've ever been to, and none are perfect, is the University of Iowa. Hands down, I mean, not even remotely it's good close. To hear. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> You're yeah. not getting hurt and, yeah. or by doing this, you yeah. know, so, yeah. So, again, Adrian, I encourage you to please consider what you've heard. There's nothing more important than your soul. Jesus said, what is a profit of man if he gains the whole world? Gets his degree, gets a good job, gets a family, gets the car, gets the boat, gets the house. What is a profit of man if he gains the whole world but forfeits his soul? What would a man give in exchange for his soul? So we're on a campus where like medicine is, I mean, this is like the most prestigious I'm, I'm, I'm in many, in many disciplines, certainly in the Midwest. So I come to you and say, Hey, I'm with, I'm with the university of Iowa medical center and I'm doing experiments on the human eye and you got brown eyes and I'm looking for brown eyes. And so I'd like to give you a million dollars for your right eye. I'm going to give you a glass eye. It won't be perfect. You won't see out of it, um, but we'll give you a new prosthetic, but I'll give you a million dollars for your right eye. Would you do it? Okay, let me sweeten the pot a little bit. I will give you five, no, I'll give you $10 million for both of your eyes. You'll be blind, but with $10 million, you can get some aid and get someone to help you around and that. But you'll be, you'll be all the richer. Would you give me both your eyes for $10 million? Adrian, if you would not forfeit one of your eyes, right, that sees the world, for what would you be willing to forfeit your soul that looks out of the windows of those eyes? I would hope nothing. Turn to Christ and live while God's giving you time. Okay? All right. Exactly. I'll let you guys get to class. God bless you. Jake, awesome. really yeah, good to God meet bless you. you, man. Yeah. yeah. Hope to see you guys again. Excellent. Sweet. All righty. Take care. Doing? Hey, thanks for your patience. I appreciate it. No problem.